Welcome, everyone. So we are going to talk about Nautilus, the file manager. If this changes, no, it doesn't. Yep. So what is it? So Nautilus is the file manager used in the most prominent distros, like Ubuntu, Fedora, OpenSUSE, and most importantly, in its enterprise parts. It was created by Isel. It was a company that was on, uh, created on 1999. They have 15 developers, and they work on it for two years. Then in 2001, after two years, they released Nautilus and they closed. So <laughs> it was not a very successful uh, company. But uh, in two years, with 15 developers, they could do a nice product. As a matter of curiosity, uh, the Linux Foundation also contributed to Nautilus at the start. So Nautilus is a 16 years old C code. So as you can guess, it predates a lot of libraries that we currently use. And we'll see the issues about it. It also manages the desktop. That means, you know, in the background, when you have your background in the desktop, the icon you have above it is just a, another Nautilus window. So OK, we are going to talk about threads. Um, how do we work with it, the libraries we use for them. File management, which is the most important part, as well, how do we work with it? Operations, uh, the network, because now it's very important to have a network. How we access network, and how we do, how we do find uh, files. So the search of Nautilus. Threads. So I guess everyone is uh, <coughs> used to the term thread, but I want to make sure you know uh, what is a thread pool, because it's important to know for for knowing um, the file manager on Nautilus. So a thread pool is a way to limit the number of threads that is running at the same time on the computer. Um, usually, new CPUs has a maximum of maybe eight threads. So you want to keep a balance between your application being fast, doing its operations, but not hugging the computer for the user. So I will say a nice formula for that is half of the threads of the, of the CPU. It's nice, like four threads for Nautilus, for example, four threads for everything else that the computer wants to do. What kind of threads do we have? So there is P thread, is used the raw thread from the kernel. It was created on uh, 1995. It's nice, it's, it doesn't have actually nothing bad about it, but it has some things that we actually don't care, like setting the stack size of the thread. Then glib which is a library is really well known on the middle world of Linux, uh, makes some abstraction for threads and provides a better API for us. Introduced in 2006, uh, GIO Scheduler, which is a way to uh, manage uh, threads and operations, tasks. And it introduced uh, cancelable. It's a way to cancel the operation or the, the thread. So for example, you have a thread that is running something, you cancel the operation, then in the operation you can check whether the user cancel it, and then when it returns to the callback of the thread, you can check whether the operation finished successful or it was canceled. So you don't access any data that maybe was freed at some point. Then in 2011, Glib introduced Gtask. Gtask is similar to Scheduler, but it's a little better because it introduced the concept of task and ownership. So a task is uh, sorry, a thread, an operation in a thread is, is owned by a task. In this way, we have a better memory management and we can do chain operations better. So, okay, remember, pthread, 1995, your scheduler, 2006, gtas, 2011. So I have a question for you because I want to know if you think in the same way I thought when I started with Nautilus. Good things Nautilus use, and you have three choices. It's multi-choice, so you can, any combination is valid, okay? So for the first choice, p thread, please, right hand, and like this. Wait, 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 with one finger. For yes, scheduler, right hand, this finger, so you can do like this, like this, okay? And you task, like this, okay? Let's vote. Okay, who is rocking like me? <laughs> Those ones? All right, Nautilus used the three of them. So we will see what's the problem with it, because we don't have a, a nice way to manage 
a, a shared thread pool between them or the threads uh, inside Nautilus. So you may guess what can happen. So file management, a glib file. As I said, glib is very, really well known on, as on the middle world of Linux. And a glib file is just an abstraction layer for, for the uh, file descriptors on, on the kernel. It provides us uh, like the path for the file. We can load contents. But a glib file is not uh, the actual real file. It's just a path, OK? It's just an abstraction. It also provides to us uh, abstraction for operations, like copy, mount. So you can uh, G file copy, uh, use a file, move a file. It's really easy. You have to put the path, and that's it. So that's really convenient for, for our site, for Nautilus. It also has uh, attribute abstraction. That means the information about the file, about the real file. So you do like G file query info. You get the, the information about the file, what type of file. Like maybe it's a picture, maybe it's a, it's a text. Uh, the size of the file, the permissions, which is very important. And all of those, uh, those uh, operations are asynchronous. That means when you start an operation, your program still goes on, goes on, goes on. And what that, when that operation finishes, then a callback is called, and then you can react about it. In this way, we don't block the application because of the hard disk. This is, of course, a need in a file manager because you access a lot of input output input output operations. But glib is just an abstraction layer. So who is the one that actually implements the operations? So it's a library called GBFS in Linux. So it implements all the operations at the abstraction layer for G file. But what is actually useful about GBFS is that it has some tools, like for example the recent files. So you can imagine you start Nautilus and you want to access your recent files what should Nautilus do? It should go through the whole file system, took a look at the access time, and then order them. Well, it's impossible, as you can guess. You cannot do that. So GBFS, since it's a daemon, it can track those files that were accessed previously. So for us, from the Nautilus side, it's really easy. You only have to access a nice path. It's called recent slash slash, and you have your recent files there, nothing else. So it's really, it's really convenient for us. Then GBFS also provides uh, Fuse, which is the virtual uh, file system for Linux, it, and translates this path, like the recent, the trash. And also it, it provides us with cloud providers, like OnCloud, Google Drive, and we'll talk about it uh, after. You can also use it as a command line tool, so you can get an information, monitor files from the command line. So for me, it's much better than anything else, like LS or whatever you want to use. GBFS is much nicer to use on the command line. OK, one important thing, the cache. So what is a cache, and why do we need it? So for a file manager, you, well, most, the most important thing is in the hard disk, right? But accessing the hard disk, well, it's really expensive. So a cache is a way to have on RAM, on the fast memory access, um, everything that needs about those files. So for example, the first time you are going to access a directory, it's going to be slow. Yes, it's going to be slow because you cannot do anything about it. But what about the next time? So if you can have the information about this directory and its children on RAM, then the next time you access it, it will be fast. So we really need a cache for, for a file manager. It's implemented as a global hash table. So you have a global hash table, a, you try to access a file there. If the file is not there, then you go to the hard disk and put it in the hash table when you have everything ready. But what's the problem with, the, with cache? But like as a concept, invalidation. So what happens is a file changes on the hard disk. So you need to synchronize the application because you are working with a, with a file in the RAM that is no longer valid. The information is no longer valid. So you need a way to synchronize. What's the solution for it? So we need a set of solutions. First, a notification system. So you need a way to, inside Nautilus, connect objects to files if they are interested in those files. So for example, when a file changes, then you notify those objects. This is a notification system, and we use uh, glib signals. It's really common. Eh? You use like gsignal con connect, to the change um, to the change signal of the file, and wh whenever it changes, you notify the whole application. 
But since this is 3D and you have a lot of things going on, a lot of uh, files requesting um, information and, and all of this, you need a queue. So you have the change queue. The change queue is for the cache. That means when Nautilus does, does some uh, operation, then it notifies, it, it puts this, this operation, the result of this change, in the change queue. And we also have priorities in the queue because it's more important for us knowing, for example, the permissions of a file than knowing the type, like, I don't know, this text. Well, I care more about the permission if I, if I can access it. So we have the high priority queue, the low priority queue, and then um, in this way, we can uh, manage them on all the threads at the same time. This is for the cache, but what happens with the hard disk? Because we have a lot of files that wants to access, uh, sorry, Nautilus wants to access a lot of files um, in the hard disk. So we have the work queue, and also have its priority. That means when a file requests some information to the real file in the hard disk, it puts in the work queue, and when the thread can, um, it will try to, to get it from, from, the, from the hard disk. So here we have already a few threads going on. But well, this is how we implement the cache, and I think it's a nice way to do it. So now that you know how the cache works, what is a Nautilus file? Because we have to do something, right, in the Nautilus part. So a Nautilus file is just a G file, as we saw it before, and the cache for the information. Then we have a Nautilus directory, which is used a G file as well, the information of the cache, and a set of Nautilus files. Why we, differ, we make a different session between the file and a directory? Well, it's really convenient because for cache invalidation, when you invalidate a directory, you actually want to invalidate as well its children. But that doesn't happen with a normal file. Like if it's a text file, you invalidate the, the file itself, but not nothing below it, under, under it, because there is nothing under it, right? So in this way, we have the different session. The API is nicer in this way. And also for monitoring. So when you are in a directory and you are watching the files for changes on the file, you want to get notified about all or the, or the children. But for a normal file, you don't want that. So monitoring. So we need a way to watch the file on the hard disk, right, for any change. This is called monitoring, and we actually use glib as well. It's called G file monitor, and that's it. You put the path, and whenever it changes, it just notifies you. It uses the kernel inotify, which was a tool introduced in 2000, I think. Yeah, 2000. But it has an issue. You can only have 1,024 watches for the whole process. What's the issue with that in Nautilus? So imagine that you have a directory. And you go to the command tool, uh, to the terminal, for example. And you move a file from that directory to another one. So Nautilus will see that a file got removed there. And it will say, OK, there is some file deleted here. But it's delete or it's move. So Inotify and uh, Glib needs to monitor also the destination to know whether a file goes deleted and moved here, and then the operation is a move, or whether it's just a deletion. But since we only have 1,024 watches, we cannot watch the whole file system. So we can do something, we could do something smarter if we could watch the whole file system, for example, for this issue. For us, it's not this, this big issue, but for Tracker, which is a library we will talk about later, it's a really, really big issue. Operations. How we do operations? Well, as you can guess, uh, Glib provides us with that. Um, a Nautilus operation is actually a batch of Glib operations because it will be overkill to create a thread for every Glib operation. So, and also for the user, it just select a bunch of files and move them. So for the user, that's one operation. So we thread in the same way on Nautilus. So what we do? We just create a thread. We put the different Glib operations there. And here comes the complex thing. We look for conflicts. What happens if the destination has some file that is, it has the same name? So we have to record the user what to do. Shall we replace it? Shall we skip it? 
but we are in another thread. So we have to actually record the user in the main thread and this thread block it. This, is, this make it complex because you, you, can, you have to actually lock all the operation until the user answer and make this communication between threads. Then once it's done, we put it in the change queue. And that's it. What's the challenge with the files and, and the management of files in Nautilus? For me, after this one and a half year working on it, memory management, really, is the worst thing on Nautilus. Because the problem is if a file doesn't get freed, it means we leak that file, Nautilus crash at any time later. But who is the owner of files? Well, there is like 300 references to the same file at the same point. And the plugin system, a plugin of, of Nautilus, can have a reference to a Nautilus file. What happens? So imagine that you have a file in the, in the cache, and then you change the directory so that file no longer has to be in the cache. Because you change the directory, you don't care about that directory anymore. So the cache system, what it, it does is like, OK, we mark this file as gone. This file is gone. But imagine that a plugin of Nautilus has a reference to that file. So that file doesn't get freed. OK. So you try to access that file later, and then Nautilus has an answer like, if this file is gone, just crash. Because you cannot do anything about that file. And that file is gone because it doesn't get freed before. So really, the, the memory management in in a file manager, for me, is the worst part to deal with. OK, network. So network in a file manager? Well, yes. I mean, probably when you want network, you go to the web browser. But there is some network location that are use a bunch of files. For example, FTP servers, or Samba shares, the Windows network um, directory. So it's really useful if you can have them integrated on, on, on the file manager, right? They are integrated just as a mount of EBFS. It's really well, it's nice to access in this way. But even more, what about cloud providers like Google Drive and Cloud? Well, it would be really cool to have them on the file manager, right? We have them. Because they are just a bunch of files, right? So what we do to mount this kind of network so we create a new asynchronous operation to mount a directory that DBFS provide us um, uh, the path, a nice path, like Google Drive slash slash, really easy. We ask for the password is needed. Then we download the file metadata, not the files itself. And then we provide the directory translated with this easy path, like Google Drive slash slash. So for, from the file manager point of view, DBFS here uh, help, help us a lot. But what happens with cloud providers treating them just as a GBFS mount? So are they just a bunch of files? Well, yes and no. Because you want to know if the file is synchronizing or, I don't know, a bunch of other things that their applications of Google Drive and Cloud are, are doing. So we don't have integration for it. And they are going to, either way, make its own private uh, way to synchronize. So providing uh, the backend, like in GBFS, yeah, it's, it's good because we have some integration, but it's not the best solution. So what will be a solution for that? Well, we can use Dbus, Dbus, uh, Dbus service. So Dbus is an IPC system. It means that it's a way to, connect, to communicate between different process. So we can make, for example, Dropbox connect to the file manager in a basic API, and then say which files are synchronizing. We are working on it. It's something to work on in the future. But I think it will, be, it will be a nice point versus Windows, iPhone, or whatever, Macintosh, because they don't do it. OK, let's move on. Search. What do we want when we perform a search? Well, one of the most important things I will say is when you put, for example, uh, text because you are searching for it, you want the file that contains in its name this text, right? This is like the most important thing or, or the most basic thing. But what about those users that, for example, has a presentation file? Uh, I don't know, for university, 
and they are working about a psychologist called, I don't know, Florian, or say something. So the user wants to search for Florian and then provide this file. That means searching on the content inside that file. So we have to do that. Also, we want the search to be recursive. That means if you are in a location, search on every level below it, under it. Why? Well, searching on the same directory you are on is more or less easy. But what about if it's three levels deeper? It's really hard to search for, for a file in, in this way. So we need to provide uh, this tool. But we want to give preference to a closed hierarchy. That means if a file is found in the current directory, we really want to give a better rank so it goes up in the solution, like in the final uh, view. So we want a, a ranking system. And last but not least, we want a treated but not hanging the user computer. So OK, what's needed for it, for the search on Nautilus? So first, for matching the name, it's really easy. You just check whether the text contains, uh, the, the name of the file contains this text you're searching for. OK? Then, content matching. So how do we do search inside the content of the files? So there is this library tracker that what it does is tracking parts of your file system. Of course, it cannot track the whole file system for the issue I said before with iNotify. So it only tracks like documents, downloads, pictures, these most um, used uh, folders. So it provides, it also tracks uh, the contents inside the files. And it puts everything in a database, so it's really, it's really um, fast to search. Just to make a point, track, uh, search on tracker is more or less one second for me. A, ser a normal search, like iterating over the directories, takes two minutes. So it's really a big difference, and it's really useful to have tracker here. Of course, if, if we didn't have tracker uh, tracking the content of the files, what will happen is that we should go to a every file, parse uh, all the content, and search for, for the word. Of course, that's completely impossible. We need a way to track it. So as I said, we want recursive and some rank to, for the hierarchy. That means, uh, as I said before, a close to the hierarchy means uh, higher rank. So what algorithms is for this? Well, there is an algorithm that is called breadth first search. It's really common. And what this does is that you are in a location, then you visit the first level of this location. Then once you are done here, you go to the two territories. And only for that level. And when everything is done there, then you go to the next level. But you don't go like this. No, you go level by level. So in this way, you found the files that uh, are close to the, in the hierarchy uh, earlier. We also, of course, um, need a way to make the ranking. So we, we make a rank based on the word proximity between the, the text and the file name. And then for the full text search that uh, Tracker provides for the content of the files, uh, Tracker provides user rank as well, which is easy. We do, we do some kind of uh, zoom between them, and then we put in the final result. And as a nice thing, uh, the search is implemented as an Autilus directory. So in this way, we can reload it. We can show the files, we can invalidate the cache, we can do everything. So it's a strange, but um, it works well for us. Like, created a directory, virtual directory that is nothing just a resource of search. So, okay, we have everything for making a search. Let's do it. We have three engines the model engine, this is the uh, engine which search on the cache, on the current cache. As you know, the cache is very fast, so we want to use uh, engine for it. We have a simple gene, which is the, the one that goes recursively on the whole file system below you, under you. And then you have tracker. OK, we create a thread for everyone. We prepare to catch the hits for every file that is found. We connect, we connect to the signals, everything. We start the genes. And of course, it, normally it works, but let's, let's do a little evil example. Let's search for the character A. What happens with A? Well, A is the shorter one 
and A is the, is the character most used in every language, in European language. So Natilos is going to be crazy. So let's go, what happened? Well, I don't know if you knew this scene from The Simpsons, but this is what happened with the threads. It doesn't go, it cannot work. So the computer hangs. You see that the computer is hanging, not the application, the computer. Well, and therefore the application, but you, you first see the computer that is completely stuck. Why? So we have thread for search engines. We have a thread for thumbnailing. Thumbnailing is the preview of the files. We have the threads for the word queue, the one accessing the disk. We have threads for the change queue, the one that is for the file cache. Imagine that you are doing some operations like moving files. You have more, search, uh, more threads. But they are not limited by a shared thread pool. So what happens? We have more shares than the CPU can handle, and we don't limit them. So we handle the computer. This is a real problem in Atilus. I will say it's one of the biggest problems um, under the hood. But yeah, I know, don't leave me with a bad taste in this talk. So we are working on it. And we already work on it a few. So what's already there? Now the search starts when the user says, and in this are reused. Because before, when you perform a search, it is a searching, and then when you stop, Natilus, what it was doing is just forgetting about this search and creating a new one. That means if you have 10, 10 threads, you have 10 threads more now. <laughs> 20, <laughs> it's not going to work. So it was making it slow even with normal search like, I don't know, hello, which doesn't make Natilus slow. And now uh, the engines are reused, so that means you don't go over creating and deallocating the search engines again, stopping the threads, no, you, you only change. The, the query. Also, we improve the catch, the catch invalidation because, as I said, the search is implemented as a, as a Nautilus directory. So, what can happen if you are searching for a file and that file changes? Then you invalidate the directory and then the search goes again and goes again. And Nautilus was doing like a lot of invalidations because you have to make sure that your information is valid. But, well, you can make the performance a little better. So we improve the caching validation for that. And we are working on porting to Gtask now, which is the first step to, to be able to share the same thread pool and limit the threads, which is really important for us. What's the time? Are we, uh, yeah. Oh, cool. So after this talk, what I want you to keep in mind, more than what we learn about uh, the file, uh, how to implement a file manager, what are the challenges, use my experience working on it. So yeah, use threads. They are really good. You need them. But use a thread pool, please. <laughs> use the same thread pool, because it's not, it doesn't make any sense to use threads if you are not going to limit them. It doesn't make sense. Of course, you have to use a cache. If your application is, is accessing a lot of input output, if you don't use a cache, you're not going to go anywhere. You need to, to use a cache. And well, for Nautilus, I understand because it's 16 years old, so the libraries are, it predates a lot of libraries. But please, use already well test libraries, for example, glib, and try to use it with, co with coherence. Because most of the, the problems with Nautilus is just the, the custom code, the code that it's using. It's really hard to maintain this kind of code. And last but not least, in my humble opinion, think twice if C is the language you need. Because I think we are in a time that we shouldn't allow the tools we are using to rely the memory management on us. Because it's one of the most pitfalls in applications. And it's really hard to, I mean, it's half of my time is just fixing these things. So think twice about it. Okay, we are finishing. So if you want these slides, they are in my GitHub account. If you want to use them, read them. If you want to know more about Natilus, go to the wiki of Gnome. And if you want to talk with me, discuss with me, whatever, uh, go to irc at uh, gim.org on Natilus channel. My email is cisoriano at gnome.org. And I really like to play ping pong as a amateur level. Don't, don't go professional. 
So if you want, uh, if you want to play ping pong during the conference, you just catch me. If you are a hater, we can go to the office. There is some table we can play there. And now, if you have some, any questions, please ask me. And thank you for your attention. Sorry, I, I'm, not, I'm not listening well. I'm not listening well. Can you yeah. up your, your voice? Um, you had mentioned a list of things that you wanted to have in search, right? Like the access server. Yes, and yes. And so, on and so, on. so the one thing you didn't mention, which I think is quite important, is speed. And I remember in old versions of Nautilus, you used to be able to just type some letters and it would be instantly on a file if it was in that directory. Is there any chance to have something that works similarly or at least as fast Yeah, okay, so the question is if type ahead is going back. <laughs> uh, well, I think it's a different pattern. When you were doing type ahead, it's only searching for the star of the file name. You have to know a lot of things for the, only for the current directory. It's really a, a small use case. I mean, probably it's very, it's very important, but it's really a small. So what I would like to do is just to improve a lot the search for the current directory. So you can, you can have almost in, this, in, the, in the same time the results you will have with type ahead, but better because it will search any part of the file name, it will search the content of the file. So I, I think that's the way forward. Yes, it was instant because it was doing nothing more than use on the widgets that was already there. Yeah, yeah, so I, I think the path forward is just to improve uh, what we can with the current directory. I think we can do it. I think we can improve it much more. I answered your question? Uh, yeah. Okay, cool. More questions? Asos and you just got a question. You have a scarf. More questions? Uh, wait. <laughs> yes, tell me. Yes, ZBFS. On the command line, use ZBFS, mount the, the network or whatever you, you want, and ZBFS has a lot of debugging, so you can actually look the process. Ah, the home directory. Okay, still the, the answer is GBFS. So GBFS is for everything, for every file. Okay. So use GBFS info, GBFS LS, everything like that, uh, like that. You can search for it, you can debug a lot of, of it with yeah, it. Because, because it would be helpful if I could debug it, because if I could track the problems that you or anyone else working on all the list and they don't have the same environment. Yeah. Yeah, so GBFS is the answer. Like, okay. it's really convenient. More questions? So when you were talking about networking, you said uh, ask a password if needed. Yeah. Well, authentication is much more than passwords. Uh, so uh, obviously Nautilus does have support for things like GSS API and various protocols. Can you talk a little bit about that support and its roadmap? So the question is if we are going to support more kind of authentications? Uh, no, but uh, it's, it's more about like the user interface around uh, authentication methods like CSS API. 
Ah, no idea, sorry. No, it's, not in my, no, it's not in my Roma because I totally don't have idea about it. Uh, wait a moment, I have to give more scarf. More questions? Okay. Sharing code in Tracker? Yeah, but uh, I mean, for me, Tracker is another beast. And Tracker uh, just use what um, we use, like Glib, GBFS, if I'm, if, I'm, if I'm remember correctly now. So I think what we can share is already shared. I, I don't know the code of Tracker, so I, I don't know more, but. Uh, no. No, it's really a different beast. Tracker is a database. Nautilus is not. Like, Tracker is just a database of metadata. It has some kind, some nice features like connecting objects of, like, you access um, a user, sorry, a contact. That contact is in some place, so you can access the, the map where he is. That's not Nautilus. So it's, it's really a different beast. So what can be shared about the, just the files? Tracker is mo much more than just files. Uh, it's already shared, so nothing else there. Um, more questions? And the scarf. Now without the scarf, I don't know if you want to make more questions, but more questions? That's kind of tracker, right? But okay. Yes, but you need to track the change as well, and you cannot track the whole file system. It's a problem for the, from the kernel. You don't know. That's the problem. So you search. So you search, and you have to be sure the files are, has the correct information. Maybe that file is already gone. Maybe the, that file was deleted. So you have to update that database. How do you do it? You have to monitor every file. But we have the issue of eNotify. It's the problem with Tracker. So really, the, the solution will be to have more support for something different to eNotify in Tracker. Then we can use Tracker just as a, as a matter of getting files from there. But the problem is eNotify. It's still eNotify. So we cannot do anything about it yet. At, you know, naturally, the, the problem with being fast or not, sometimes it's more Nautilus itself than, than um, with the threads, the threads and everything than, than actually going through the directories. More questions? Another question? Can you repeat? Yes. I didn't really understand what you meant. How you, how you got around that problem. We don't. Oh, you just don't. Yeah, we don't. So what happens is that Natir, Natilus use cache and watch the, the directory he's looking at. That's it. We cannot watch the whole file system. So th there is no solution for it. Yeah. More questions? No? OK, so thank you for your attention.
Hey. I don't have an answer. Huh? I don't have an answer. Why? Because I don't. It's really hard. It's really hard. The right language for the job. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I have a related uh, maybe suggestion because uh, I remember what Inks Inkscape. Uh, you know this too, Inkscape. Yeah. Uh, they do. Uh, they they uh, have a garbage collector wired to C++, mm -hmm. and they manage uh, tricky stuff with garbage collector mm -hmm. and do ma manual memory management. Mm -hmm. uh, and I wonder if you can you can do the same, like track G5. I I guess. Collector. But for me, it's already complex, the code of the project, to just add another layer of complexity. What I would like is uh, the programming tool. By programming tool I'm using, like the programming language I'm using, just provide me this support. Like, I don't have to do anything about it. It could be garbage collector, but then we have performance issues. So there is, for example, this new language, Rust, that is using mix of it. So we can have something like this, but... Yeah, it's, it's really a hard problem. It's really a hard problem. You spent half of time for many, uh, your time. Yeah, yeah, so that's true. Hard, that's true. But, uh, but it will be too much work to, to yeah, add new things, I think. But yeah, thank you for the idea. Oh, yes.